In this tutorial, we're going to go a bit deeper into the Modify tab and look at how to adjust the closures of your leading edge and your trailing edge airfoil. So as a practical example, we're going to zoom in on the trailing edge here and see how adjusting some of these parameters changes the shape of our airfoil. On the trailing edge, we're going to leave it at a flat closure for now, and then we're going to adjust the sharpness or the bluntness of this trailing edge using closure. So if we skew both, notice that we have either an absolute or relative flag, and we can set this to either an absolute thickness of something like 0.05, let's say. And what this does is it goes perpendicular to the mean camber line and lofts up and down, and then re-lofts the upper and lower surface of your airfoil to meet that thickness. So you notice if we go to skew upper only, the bottom of this surface stays the same. If we go to skew lower, and you know what, let's just drag it. So notice how the top surface stays the same. If we go back to skew both, both surfaces are lofted. Okay? So you can adjust this either using relative or absolute distances, but what we can also do in the section, or the airfoil rather, we told it to sharpen the trailing edge. Let's turn that off. So now we have a blunt trailing edge, and let's say we want to modify that. We can either tell it to skew and set it to a zero thickness, and now we have a sharp trailing edge, or if we want to do something different, we can say we want to extrapolate. So let's look at what happened there. If we extrapolate and say zero, it put a bit of extra material on the upper and lower surface of the airfoil and lofted both of those angles out until they intersected. So that just lofts them out to a point. So there's a few ways that you can recreate a sharp trailing edge if you happen to have a blunt one by default. So that things like a panel method or a variety of solvers are a bit happier using a sharp trailing edge. So for right now, let's also look at what we can do with this trim control. Now this is if you want to take some material away from the airfoil. So if we trim an X, what this is doing is it's trimming some of the X coordinates from the airfoil. And notice that it's maintaining this perpendicular line on the mean camber. You can also set this up to trim it to a certain thickness. So as before, let's say we wanted an absolute thickness of 0.05. Well, that's going to trim X back until you hit a thickness of 0.05. So that's a number of ways that you can modify the closures on an airfoil section. Note that if we change this section to something like a rounded rectangle and we turn off clipping, we see what's going on with this. If we start adjusting the closure on something that already happens to be a weird enough shape, what's happening here is we've given this blunt edge a cap. So it's taking the two feature lines here and just blending this to have more material in between where it would have been. So you can do some really weird things using closure and different types of geometries inside VSP.